And so they're able to come help, you know, do whatever may need to be done. And they're able to do those other things as well. Yeah. I'm gonna write that down. That's great. It's great to hear what you're looking for, like what you actually want. Um, well, that's, let's talk about job ads now. So I'm just going to go on Indeed here and we'll, we'll try and soak in like what that looks like for you because everyone on here is using Indeed, but it's, it's quite rare that they're standing behind a nurse looking at what she's doing or he's doing mm -hmm. and what's important. So I'm just going to pull up Indeed. While I do that, is, is this your go-to for finding a new job or where would you normally be looking otherwise? Generally, um, in my experience, because I feel like I am on LinkedIn, I do have my profile on there. I have not used Indeed as much, you know, in recent times. I would go to, yeah. um, I would just Google like nurse in the area that I was looking for, or I would look at hospitals that have like a good reputation, like top five hospitals in Louisville, Kentucky. And then I would mm -hmm. go to those hospitals, like job boards and look at, um, but a lot of times Indeed pulls from those job boards. So I would see some of the same ads. Yeah. Yeah. I think um, from like an advertising perspective, anything that you do, that's something that the recruiters on this call can try and get in on. Mm -hmm. So you said like you Google it, mm -hmm. there's SEO that, that can be done. Mm -hmm. um, you say you talk to people, there's, there's referral campaigns that can be done mm -hmm. as well. Oh, I definitely see if I either know someone at that hospital if I know someone who knows someone, also yeah. it, um, I will ask like other nurses, maybe if I'm work looking at switching to a different facility, like, hey, did you do clinicals at that hospital when you were yeah. in nursing school? Do you know someone who has? What did they think about it? Because oftentimes mm -hmm. people are not thinking that the nursing students or respiratory therapy students or whoever are paying attention to the, yeah. what's going on in the unit, but they are. So <laughs> they are always mm. great to ask, like, what did you think when you were there for six weeks where well, the nurse is nice what was the environment like mm. yeah nurses talk a hundred percent we do <laughs> yeah I mean that's <laughs> that's something that I think recruiters haven't really cracked as much like as recruiters we're trying to attract your attention by putting up an ad but whenever you see that ad you're going to try and speak to people who've already worked there mm -hmm. and that that really is often out of the hands of a recruiter. That's down to the, the culture of the organization. Exactly. Mm -hmm. If we say, so imagine you're looking for a job in Miami mm -hmm. and you're going through the first page of Indeed. Like, what are you looking for? What's going to catch your eye? What's, I, what's going to, yeah. So I would probably look first at the name of, the, of who's hiring. Like, is it an agency? Is it a hospital? you know, that that's actually like listed. So like where it says like tenant resource pool, I don't know what that is. So I probably yeah. would keep scrolling um, okay. until I saw a hospital, like, okay, Mercy Miami Hospital. I'm like, okay, that sounds legit. I would probably like click on that and see like what other things they have or Baptist Health. I know that's really big. I would probably click on that. Um, VA, I know yeah. it's reputable. So sometimes it's reputation, but I'm also looking at um, are they offering new nurses? Is this for experience? And if it says like what unit they're hiring for. Yeah. So we got this one, like Department of Veterans Affairs. You, it sounds like, you know, if you see that name, you see a star rating. Mm -hmm. It's more attractive, right? Mm hmm 100%. Yeah. Okay. I appreciate when they put the salary on there. That's always yeah. nice. Even if it's just an estimate, like that's nice to like, just know uh, mm. where you're starting, at least have an idea. Yeah. Does the star rating matter? You're looking at that. I don't always look at that because I'm not sure if it's, you know, who's making that rating. So sometimes I'm like, mm -hmm. oh, the star mm -hmm. rating is two. If I'm looking at other things at that place, then I might be like, oh, let me click and see what the people said. Um, but yeah. that's not the first thing that I always look at. Yeah, I think that's the, the rating on Indeed. So that's going to be all the employees or it might be nurses. I'm, I'm not big on mm -hmm. indeed. I've got um, a glass glass door. Yeah. I've, to sometimes too, to look at like what employees would say, I don't know if that's, you know, advertisers okay. would use that, but I look at that too to see like what other people have said about 
the process. And... Yeah. Yeah. I hope everyone's taking notes because <laughs> that's that's something that's very cheap and it's not too difficult to implement that. You don't need to get, you know, sign off or a mass budget to implement going out in front of your nurses and saying, can you put your opinion of us on Glassdoor? Mm-hmm. Um, it sounds like it's something that you pay attention to. Yeah, actually, a lot of people, um, even I know some new nurses who are just graduating, who are looking for like ICU positions or different roles, they would go on Glassdoor and see if anyone had put anything about that facility before they apply. Yeah. Yeah, it makes sense. Mm-hmm. Brenna asks, are bonuses listed eye-catching, either sign-on or relocation? No. Not for me personally. I think it can be if you are looking for a hospital, if you're looking to relocate to a new area, then yes, relocation bonus is going to catch your eye. Um, But most nurses, a lot of times people will offer you bonuses if they think that you'll be a good fit for their facility. So that's not normally the first thing, especially because a lot of times hospitals who are offering bonuses that are higher than the rest of the market seem a little bit desperate. And so you're like, why do they need to hire, you know, have such a high bonus or so Mm. in general with nurses I've spoken with as well, most people that's not, they're not looking for that unless they're looking to relocate. Okay. Hmm. That's interesting. Sounds almost counterintuitive. I do look at the new ones too. If it has new on it, I normally look at that first because I feel like, um, I just saw someone in chat say big bonus means big problems. That's a hundred percent what we think if you're offering a big bonus your place is probably not somewhere we want to work I mean and that may or may not be true but that's just the general feeling that most nurses get when they see that unless they're a brand new grad who's like I'll go anywhere because I need to pay off student loans well there you go and Mm. they will do that is is that different if they introduce a at the interview stage Mm -hmm. yes which that sounds counterintuitive, but it is because I feel like if during the interview, they're like, I'm telling you all the things about the company. I'm telling you why we would be a good fit. I'm convincing to you that like our company is a great place for you. Also, we offer bonuses, but then I'm like, oh, okay, they're offering this, but they don't have to post it and put it everywhere, which means that they're not using this as a desperate tactic to reel in anyone. They're offering this because they're looking for good candidates. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So that changes the conversation. Yeah, I'm I'm writing out time. That's good. <laughs> it's really useful. Because yeah, it just seems like if if you're trying to advertise a job and there's a bonus, people like money, you should put the bonus in. Mm-hmm. But I guess I didn't think of it that way. Um so we've got some more questions. Uh Mia says, Would you look at a position that was over 30 days old? Mm-hmm. I would look at it. Um, but personally, I probably would not apply to it unless I had a contact there or I knew that they were hiring, like it was a position holder, like they were hiring like 10 ER nurses or 10 ICU nurses. And that's why the posting was still there. Because a lot of times I feel like they will have the posting up for a while, but yeah. they've already hired that person. Okay. That's just full to know. Cause I think, no. Like if it says this position is taking you know, 10, 10 applicants, or we're looking for 10 people, then I'd be like, oh, this is older, but it's because they're actively hiring for more than one person. Hmm. Okay. Would that, would a bit of scarcity play into your mentality? Like if it said there's only three positions available? Mm, Probably not. Not unless it was somewhere that I thought was like a really good fit that I was like, oh, for example, like yeah. if the Mayo Clinic called and said like, or like, you know, like a really big known like research center was like, hey, we're only hiring for two nurses because everyone wants to come here. You know, this is a super mm. popular position. Then I'd be like, oh, I should okay, probably yeah. fly because they yeah. know their reputation is good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so what I, what I want to do is just touch upon the, the application experience and then we'll have time for some more questions at the end. And um, let's see if we can get one here. What, let's see, like I, in, in our business, so we want to make it as slick as possible. So we let the nurses submit their information and get a phone call requested in 60 seconds. Now I want to know, 
like DAWs are really difficult application process which puts up a lot of barriers put you off as a nurse or is that just an inconvenience that you're willing to get over because you like the job yeah it's an inconvenience i'm willing to get over if i like the job if it's okay. if it's somewhere where i'm like yeah like maybe this is interesting i'm not sure then mm-hmm. yes i will be like why is their application so long you know but if it's somewhere where i'm like okay they're not asking the same questions over and over and over again they're asking important things then yeah. yes, I would continue. I would continue with the application and I might be like, oh, that was annoying, but that's not going to yeah. make me like not apply there again. Yeah. What if you saw the job on like f- Facebook, for example? Mm-hmm. Would you be, that's obviously going to be a bit of a lower commitment because you might have just saw it. Is that something that you're, you place in that category where it needs to be fast? Um. Not necessarily because I feel like people advertise or, you know, they're like companies have Facebook, you know, pages, recruiters have Facebook pages and they put things up so often that I, I probably wouldn't think it would be like a time issue for that. The yeah. only time I think like, oh, we should apply to this fast is when it says something like this, like open and closing dates. Then I'm like, oh, I'm going to apply right now, even if this is going to take a long application. Okay. Yeah. Otherwise, I'll be like, oh, I'll put it on the list. And whenever I'm applying to jobs next time, I'll come back and apply for it. But anytime yeah. I see that there's like an open and closing date, then that will be like, oh, I need to do that one first. Mm. Yeah, okay. That is, that's kind of scarcity coming into you then, the time mm-hmm. scarcity. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, it's all inside us. <laughs> um, so interviews then, tell us a little bit more about what you're looking for. Yeah, I feel like in most interview processes, a lot of times you speak to a recruiter, they speak to someone in HR, um, and then, you know, someone else along the way. But I feel like it would be really important to have, oh, am I breaking it? Yeah, there you go. That's it. Is that better? That's better, yeah. Sorry. (laughs) Um, I feel like it's really hard in interview processes sometimes because you speak to a recruiter, then you speak to you know, so in an HR, then you speak to someone on the floor who actually works there, hopefully. So I feel like the questions in those initial interviews um, could be a little bit different to help pick the best nurse for that unit. And not necessarily saying like, you know, how do you hang an IV drip, but just some questions about, you know, what are your long-term goals? Like, are you planning on doing this job so that you can then apply to be a CRNA or go to APRN school or whatever? So just like having actually specific questions geared towards yeah. that unit and that role is important yeah okay from what i've seen recently we we uh spoke to someone and they said uh, to be honest if they have a pulse and they have a certificate we'll hire them yeah and i think with them that was kind of feeding into the to the interview where their their questions were a little bit lower so they were just saying like do you have the certificate do you have the experience great you got the job um but it sounds like with those higher level ic Mm -hmm. positions it's almost like paying lip service to you as an ic nurse so by asking you those questions they're showing that it's important to them even though they'll probably hire you even if like your answers aren't amazing flawless answers yeah at least they care enough to ask and they have enough consideration for the other nurses who are already working in that unit to try to identify maybe someone who would not be a good fit. Yeah. And after that interview, um, what makes it smooth for you? So you've done the interview, like what do you want to see next? I like to see a follow-up of some sort. Um, Like, you know, thanks for whatever, our interview, yada, yada next steps are going to be, I'm going to send your application to the hiring manager and then they'll be giving you a call. Great. A lot of times after interviews, they'll say, Hey, I'm really excited. I really think you'll be a great fit. Yada, yada. You don't hear anything at all. And then Mm. like a month later, they call you back and they're like, Hey, I'm super excited. I still would like to have you. I passed on your information and you're like, I haven't heard anything in a month. Okay. Like, I, I didn't think that you were even interested in me anymore. You know, like I've moved, I've moved on. So, mm. you know, timely follow up to like e- let the candidate know that you are still interested would be important. Yeah. Comes comes back to that 
when you said earlier about if they don't have the information they let you know and then get back to you mm-hmm. it seems like if they're actually interested then they should be honest about what they need to do before exactly you. yeah and if they say hey i don't know when the hiring manager is going to call you but yeah. or they send you and they tell you that in the interview and then like a day later they email or whenever they email you and say hey I talked to the hiring manager. They're not free to next week, but I just wanted to let you know. Like that yeah. would be great just to have some continuity in the conversation. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's a good word. Continuity. I like that. Um, so thanks very much, Blair, for sharing that. Like I've definitely learned some very important things. First is like you need to, at each step of the process, ask the right questions to make the nurse interested, even if you'd hire anybody. Mm-hmm. It's it's so important from the nurse's perspective to hear those things from you. And also on the sign-on bonuses, that was that was very interesting to me. And something definitely that we'll be considering whenever we look at ads. Like, should we set in the ad or should we be saving that for an interview? Mm-hmm. Just these strategic things that if you change about, they can make a lot of difference. Definitely. Yeah. So... What we're going to do is uh, just move on to Q&A. So we've got some questions loaded in there. Before we do, I'm just going to share with everybody a little bit about AppliChat and what we do. So our mission is really to get nurses like Blair setting up and taking attention of facilities like hospitals or senior living organizations that they haven't met before. Uh, We do this through advertising on non-job board channels, so we don't go through that that slog on indeed of trying to compete with everybody else. We distribute ads across social media, phone apps, websites, you name it, we're on there. And then we let them apply quickly and get on the phone with a recruiter who is transparent and who sets the next steps and is knowledgeable about the positions. So what I'm gonna do is just put into the chat uh, a link. And if you're interested in learning more about us or speaking to me about uh, one of our support packages, then you can do that. We run events that are completely different from what you've probably seen before. We do them, as I mentioned, outside of job boards, and we can connect you with a lot of new nurses who you haven't spoken to before. So the link's in the chat if you're interested, and uh, we can have a discussion about it. Let's move on now. Patrick, if you'd like to unmute yourself, I'm going to yeah, Patrick, you can now unmute yourself and okay. uh, pitch some of the questions. Hi, I'm back. Thanks, Blair and Adam, for that. That's great. Yeah, we do have some other questions. So um, JP and Janan asked a, sort of a related question about do nurses look at monster job boards? And what about also related question, nursing groups on Facebook? Do nurses look at monster or nursing groups on Facebook? I don't feel like nurses who have experience look on Monster that often. Maybe they do casually if they're just like, oh, what's out there, but not if they're actively looking for a job. New nurses, yes. Or if, like I said, if you're relocating to a different area, but the majority of time experienced nurses do not look on Monster. Um, Facebook groups for nurses, 100%. Hmm. People will look at Facebook groups, um, you know, groups for critical care, a lot of the associations, like the Association for Critical Care Nurses, like if they have a Facebook group or a LinkedIn group, they will follow that group um, to see if anyone's posting anything about other critical care jobs. Same thing for other departments as well. Interesting, you mentioned the associations. One of the other questions was about specialty associations and networking among uh, specialties. Mm -hmm. So that's a useful place for recruiting as well? A hundred percent. If I see a job that's been posted through like, whichever specialty you're in that specialty group, or if it's in their Facebook group, or even if someone in their one of the moderators of that group posted on LinkedIn, I would be way more likely to apply to that job than I would if I just saw it in the ad. Okay. Because that definitely lends more credibility to the, the job and to the facility as well. Sure. Okay. Uh, Miranda had a question about the job description. How important is the actual job description, like the details, the requirements, the benefits, the perks, and so on, so on? Is it an important factor, or have you already decided you're going to apply based on what catches your eye at the beginning? The job description is so important, and I feel like this is a huge area that could be improved in general. 
Um, because not only are you trying to make sure that the role is something that the nurse wants, you also want it to be super clear that you are attracting the type of people that you want for that role. So it does need to include an accurate description of what the role actually does. And you wanna have emphasis on the specialty. So if you are looking for someone in ICU that has the ability to uh, use a balloon, do balloon pumps or do dialysis or you know manage ventilator patients, put that in your ad because that's gonna make it more clear to that nurse that this is the type of caliber facility that I wanna go to. So people want to see that it's it, if it looks professional, then the job and the organization is professional. There's nothing worse than those job ads where there's uh, big mistakes, typos, mm -hmm. or <sighs> weird, weird formatting and that kind of thing. It really makes you wonder what you might be walking into, right? Yeah, if there's typos, I literally will not apply. And my friends crack up because we're always like, if they can't take five minutes to spell check, <laughs> are they going to take five minutes to talk to you if there's a problem in your job? Probably not. Okay, for sure. Um, Mia asks, would you like to shadow on the unit before you took the position? I think that that is an amazing idea. And I really encourage facilities on our unit. We, we discuss that a lot because you want to be safe with having people walk around. But also what our manager does is she would take someone she's interviewing, especially if it's like the second interview and walk them around the unit, as well as like, you know, let them like stick their head into a room and be like, hey, this is Blair. She's taking care of this patient that has yada, yada, yada today. Do you have any questions for her? And that way the person, you can, the manager or whoever's interviewing can watch and be like, oh, they're asking questions. They're engaged. You know, that's a way for the, the hospital to see like, this is someone that we want to hire, but it's also a great way for the person being interviewed to see, you know, are the nurses running around and they look like they're like struggling? Does mm -hmm. it look like there's people supporting them? You know, it gives you a good idea if this is a good role for you. So I think job shadowing, especially in specialty, should be like required. Okay. And maybe sort of somewhat related to that, and you touched on this earlier, is about obviously about uh, word of mouth and, and referrals from other nurses. But what about more formal nurse ambassador programs or ways to really connect existing staff with potential candidates? I think that that's really important. First, I think it's important if you are making it a great place for your employees to work, then they will tell their friends, hey, so-and-so, I want you to come work with me here. Or if your boss says, do you know anyone who has X skill set? And you're like, I do, but she works at hospital over here. I don't know if she'd want to come over to this hospital. But even just giving them that person's name or other people that you can think of who have a certain skill set is a great way to recruit other nurses. Um, and also thinking about like what's making your organization more unique. For example, are you a hospital? If you're looking for a heart nurse, an open heart recovery nurse, do you do heart transplants? Do you do ECMO? Are you doing things that are going to attract that? If you are, make it obvious what your unique stand is. Okay, great. Uh, Miranda asked a question that I think is really interesting. Uh, what is your preferred method of contact? Phone, email, or text? This will be interesting to every recruiter, I think. If you text me, I will reply. Okay. If you email me, sometimes I will reply. Okay. If you call me out of the blue, I probably will not answer. Mm -hmm. For sure. Lots mm -hmm. of people don't answer the phone and lots of nurses say they won't check their voicemail either, right? So I will them. not check my voicemail. I will also <laughs> right. not check my voicemail. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Alexis asks a related question. Do you get a lot of email solicitations? And then how do you decide which ones to open or even respond to? Um, I get quite a few. I get a lot of emails. I get a lot of like messages on LinkedIn. If it's a generic message, I don't open it. If it says- You're, you're gonna get more after today. So people are fine tuning the messages <laughs> to you right now. <laughs> if I get a message that says, Blair, we saw your experience in childcare, which is somewhere down on my LinkedIn <laughs> from like being a nanny somewhere. And we think you'd be a great fit for this hospital. I'm like, delete. Like, I'm going to need you to, I know it's important to send out messages to a lot of people to try to get responses. But if you take someone sent me a message the other day that was like, hi, Blair, I see that while working at X hospital in this role, you did that for two years. I'm going to open that because at least you looked at my profile, even if it doesn't, it doesn't matter what your tag was, but at least you like looked at it and it wasn't just spam is what I feel like it is sometimes. Yeah, for sure. Email can be challenging. 
I think we have one more question. So I just want to remind people, if you do have other thoughts, pop them in right now, feel free. We've got a few more minutes left that we can fit them in. Um, what about the educational partnerships with nursing schools? Um, how valuable is that? And does that help add credibility for nursing students? Yes, that is so important, which this kind of goes back a little bit to what we were talking about, like compensation and like bonuses. I would be more apt to click on something that said tuition reimbursement, loan repayment, or a career advancement opportunity than I would to click on something that said bonus. Because showing that you're supporting those nurses and you're doing some sort of you know, professional career advancement or you're connecting them with a, a graduate residency program, I think it's really good to support new nurses. I've been a preceptor for years. I've had numerous nursing students who are new grads. I've had some while they were in clinicals and then when they graduated and they were like, I liked working here, I wanna apply and I kind of helped them along that process as well. So I think that that is so important. Partnering with nursing schools, I feel like is invaluable because you are cultivating the next group of nurses that you are gonna bring onto our, your unit or to your hospital. And you're, they're gonna be ambassadors in the community. Like, yeah, I chose this hospital, but I did clinicals over here and they were great too. Yeah. So that's a really yeah. wonderful opportunity. It's it is amazing how many nurses say, well, I want to go work over there, even though I haven't, I've been working somewhere else for a few years because I did my clinical there or because mm -hmm. my friend works there and she says it's the best place mm -hmm. for me to be working. Yeah, really mm -hmm. interesting. Um, okay, one more question back about emails. What about subject lines? Are there any that really stand out to you when you open your inbox? Um, I will open the ones that if they use my name and they don't say Mr. Blair, then I will do mm -hmm. that. But if they say, my, they say my name and they say, you know, Blair, critical care nurses, something, then I'll be like, oh, that's actually applicable to me. I will open that type of message or I will open the one that's just saying hiring nurses nationwide or sign on bonus offered because I don't think they're looking for me. They're just looking for a nurse. Right. Okay, great. Let me just see it. I think that was the last question. So unless you, Blair, have anything else to add or Adam, unless we get any other questions coming through, but anything else you'd like to add? I guess I did have a, there was, sorry, there was a general question from Danielle that she sent in advance, and maybe it's a good way to possibly wrap up. You've talked about lots of different factors and she said, because shortages are such a challenge besides the pay and some of the other things you mentioned, what are really important to a specialty nurse. So maybe that's just an opportunity if there's anything else on your mind, Blair. I would say it's really important, which this sounds like it should be obvious, but highlighting the fact that they are sufficient supplies for that hospital. Like if I'm working as a nurse in this hospital, am I gonna have to bring my own PPE every day? Am I gonna have to bring my own gloves or supplies? Like just being like, hey, we are well stocked. We have enough supplies. We have enough staff already. We're not so short that we can't support you. We have enough staff that will support you. And we have a great team of doctors and other specialists who also support our nursing team. Like starting off with that is a really great sell to nurses because that matters to us. Oh, great. Maybe a good way to wrap up. Oh, sorry. One more question from Miranda. What would make you refer a nurse to your current company, talking back about the ambassadors? Does a monetary incentive affect this, or are you willing to refer good, a good nurse regardless of that? Oh, I've referred good nurses regard, like without any monetary, I don't think I've ever been offered like a monetary type thing for that. Um, because if I feel like it's a good hospital and it would be a good fit for them, or I know that where they're working is more challenging for whatever reason, then I would 100% bring them in. So cultivating that culture of the company is important. That's awesome, great. Okay, I'm gonna pop my LinkedIn back into the chat again so that you can connect with me for those future webinars and then also the Facebook link. So please do that. And I'll turn it over to Adam and, and Blair just to close off if you have other comments. Um, not for me, I think just what we should do is um, for the future, uh, we're gonna be doing these every two weeks. So if you find it useful, connect with Patrick or Blair or myself and follow Apple Chat on LinkedIn and you can see when the next one is. Uh, thanks so much for engaging today and your, all your questions. And um, if you've been impressed by Blair, if you want someone to give you advice on how to improve your process. I'll uh, answer your message. You can message me. Yeah. <laughs> cool.
So thanks very much. Great. So just to close, yes, thank you, Blair. Thanks very much for your time and sharing your expertise. And let us know later if you get lots of job offers out of this. I'll be really curious. <laughs> um, I'll keep you posted. So, yes, please, please do. So yes, again, thanks to everyone for joining. We will be, this was recorded. We recorded this uh, information, this uh, webinar. So we'll be sending that out later. So, and if you're in particularly really wanting to make sure you get it, send me a message and we'll make sure you do get for that. Um, as Adam said, we'll be hosting the next webinar again around nurse recruitment. That's our focus in about two weeks. So you can watch for notifications about that. And uh, I think that's about it. So feel free to send connections and questions and anything uh, that you want to follow up on after the webinar. We hope to keep the conversation going. So thanks very much, everyone. Have a good day.